Hello, my name is Salesh and uh, I am a software engineer at Red Hat uh, working on the OVN project. And today I, I would like to talk about quite a different topic. So with my colleague Dumitru, we have kind of wondered like, uh, what does it take to test your application on RISC-V? That, so that's that what this talk, that this talk is about. So some agenda. So first, like why, why should we even do that? Uh, then we move on to, to containers, uh, to VMs, and the last point, like we, are, we did the testing for the OVN, so some results, like what has happened and things like that. So first, let's start with, with why. Uh, I mean, why not, right? But joking aside, uh, we are already doing some active testing on x86 and ARM64, and we have wondered why RISC-V has some specific things uh, and things like that. So we were wondering, like, why shouldn't we test it on RISC-V for some things like undefined behavior if you are reading misaligned uh, miss and pointers and things like that, it should crash on risk five, so it should uncover some of those bugs. Uh, the second point is that the risk five hardware is pretty hard to get right now. Uh, there are some manufacturers, but the stock is pretty low. If you, if you are not quick, you are out of luck and things like that. So yeah, let's try emulation for that, right? We have a QMU, <coughs> we have containers, so let's start with the containers. So first thing first, you will, have, you will need some dependencies. For that, you will need QME user static risk five. That is basically the emulation layer that takes care of, all, of translating the instructions. Then you need the image. Lucky for us, there is already image available. Uh, so you can just run it as any regular image. Just one thing to note, you just need to specify the architecture. So there's the dash dash arc risk, risk five sixty four. Yeah, once you are in that image, I mean, you can just install the dependencies, you can just compile your code and run the code. There are some, some things do, that you might run into with the dependencies. So for example, for us, it was that we were installing PyOpenSSL via pip, and it failed to install. The reason is that it is not pre-compiled for the, for the risk. Risk five, so we needed to compile it ourselves. That's why we needed additional dependencies like lib ffi devel and Rust for the installation. But once you have that sorted, it, it, were, it was pretty smooth, right? There are other problems with the user space emulation. The containers rely, rely on the fact that you have the kernel, the host kernel running underneath, and you are just dispatching all the syscalls directly to that kernel. You cannot do that if you have different architecture. So that's where we basically run into an issue. As I have an example of one test. It doesn't matter what the test does, but we have found out that the test is failing. And after deeper investigation, we saw that the TCP dump itself is failing because we are missing IOCTL call, right? And th this is missing from the, from the translation layer in QMU. And we have thought to ourselves, we are engineers, right? Let's fix that. Let's add, let's add the IACTL call inside the QML, recompile the QML and run that. But you are getting yourself into a rabbit hole because there are most, more syscalls and more things that you will be missing. So that's why we have VMs, because VM is running the kernel for the specified architecture. So we are all set, right? Where do you get the images? So there are two sources now, like two weeks ago it was published uh, at the Fedora project, so you can download the latest Fedora image for, for the Fedora 40. There is like the Koji project that is, that is running. Uh, I highly advise you to take a look if you didn't see the, the, the talk yesterday about, about Fedora and is 5 to take a look at it from the recording, because it talks about the, the current state of Fedora and there is 5. Uh, yeah, so there, there is Fedora 40 available Fedora and Fedora 38. In this talk, uh, I will be focusing on Fedora 40 because there is a difference between those two. Fedora 40 requires UFI boot, Fedora 38 can run with U boot. So for those who are, that are interested, I have a like, bonus slide at the end of the presentation so you can download it, how to run the Fedora 38 with the U boot. But Let's get into the UFI stuff. So again, you will need some dependencies. You will need the, the QEMU system layer to, for the emulation. You will need guest FS tool to just extract some info from, the, from that image. And you will need EDK2, which is like open source implementation of the, uh, of the UFI. 
So first thing first, you will need a volume ID for the, for the root file system. So just invoking virt file system on the raw image, it will just print you all the volumes. And you need to find the one that is basically the, 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 that has the root and uh, uh, what is it called? Completely forgot that. <laughs> it basically has the, has the root file system on it. But the, the UID for, for those is, is the same across like three. In my case, it was like def SDA3, I think. Second thing that you will need is to extract the kernel and the init ROMFS. So again, simple command, just beer get kernel. It will extract it into, into the current kernel, that, uh, current directory that you are in. Then this is an optional step, but I would highly advise you to create an overlay image. The overlay image helps you basically to keep the underlying, the base image intact. So you can have multiple overlay images over single base image, and you, you can be sure that the base image won't change or you won't break anything by doing some experiments in those images. Basically, you can just throw away the QCOW uh, overlay image and start from scratch by doing, creating new overlay image over the draw image. This can be a little intimidating. <laughs> so so th this is the command to actually uh, run the VM. So it's just simple virt install, but as you can see, there are a few things that, that you need to fill in. So on the second line, we have the kernel. So you need to fill in the name of the, of the kernel that was extracted from that, from that raw image. Same goes for the init rd parameter. You need to give it the, the name of the init ram fs that was extracted from the image. And another important thing on the third line is the UID. That's the, that's the UID of the, of the volume that you have extracted as well. If you get all, the, all those things correctly, you will be able to boot up the, the VM. Uh, one thing to note, the first boot is the slowest one because there is like running Selenux reliable over the whole, whole disk. So, so yeah, the first one will be pretty slow, but after that it's, it's kind of okay, I would say. <laughs> uh, and getting to the, to the main point, so the OVN testing, just a quick word what OVN is and, and what we do. OVN stands for Open Virtual Networking. It's just, it's SDN solution that is used by uh, OpenStack and OpenShift and, and some other projects. What do we have? We have two types of tests. We have unit tests and system tests. The unit tests are tests that do not require like too much interaction with the kernel. I mean, apart from like the basic, uh, basic syscalls, like creating sockets and things like that, we, we don't require anything special inside of them. So this is like the best candidate for the, for the container. Then we have system tests. Uh, there it is, uh, it is harder because we need a lot of kernel interaction, especially if we are using kernel data path. So this is a candidate for the VM. But again, if you have the VM already up and running, nothing prevents you from running the unit tests in, in that VM as well. And some results. Yeah, so we have installed all the dependencies, compiled it, and the, the second, second bullet point is like doing the check kernel. This is like the, uh, uh, this is like the system test. And you can see we have like almost 200 tests. Some of them failed, which is okay. Uh, it was kind of expected because uh, we have some flakes and, and, and some timing issues in those tests. The, the main thing is that there wasn't anything like it would be crashing because we would do some undefined behavior and anything like that, which, which is great, uh, at least for now. <laughs> uh, and the second, second thing is that we did also the unit test. So again, we have like 900 unit tests, some of them fail. Again, some timing issues, things like that. But what I wanted to highlight is, is, the, is the time that it took. So I, I got the real time from, from the time command. And you can see for the, for the system test, it was like 143 minutes. For the unit test, it was like 63 minutes. It's like four times the, the normal baseline, I would say. So yeah, the main conclusion is it's slow, but it works. And with that being said, I think I'm done. So if you have any, any additional questions, yes, please. Uh, in the previous slide, you showed the time to run the test. Yeah. What about the time to run the test? 
Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, the question was that I have showed the, the time to, to run the test, and uh, the question was uh, how was the time to to actually do the compilation. Uh, yeah, I think you can use probably more or less the same formula. It's like four times slower than the, than the baseline. Yeah, so, so the comment is that if we could somehow set up the cross compilation to make that faster. Uh, yeah, we could. We could also, for example, for the container image, we could prepare the image with all the dependencies installed in advance and things like that. Yeah, you could do that, definitely. It, it's a possibility. Yeah. Yes? Okay, so the comment was that Vision 5? Vision 5, too, is, is available and and they're fairly cheap and perform better. Yeah, thank you. Yes? Yeah, so, so, yeah, so for the record, and I recommend is that more boards will be available this year, right? And they are more performant and should perform. Better. Okay, yeah, thank you. Right? So the question is if the emulation is giving you all the exceptions that the risk 5 would do. In theory, it should. I mean, if it isn't, I would consider it as a bug. Uh, I mean, it should map one-to-one -to, -one to, the, to the spec. That's like my opinion. I, 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 <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, don't, I don't know the code, but in my opinion, if it doesn't behave to like one-to-one -to -one -to with the spec, I would consider it as a bug. No, no, this is, this is just pure emulation. No real hardware involved. Yeah. Yeah. So the question is, what's the time to run the unit test in the container? Uh, this is actually the container. The, the, the unit tests, sh sorry, should have said that. The unit tests are in the container. The system tests are in the, in the VM. But I don't expect like it would be different like in, in any way. Yeah. Maybe it's seeing what kind of hardware did you run those tests on? Yeah, so the question is what kind of hardware did I run those tests on? So it was x86 machine, pretty powerful, like 64 cores uh, and like 128 gigs of RAM. So pretty powerful machine, yeah. Okay, so I don't see any, any hands. So thank you much. Thank you very much. <laughs>